Clapping back in response to D Flow for getting to mention him as being out for the Nuggets Warriors game. Come on, man. I mean, come on. Clay Thompson pressed Clay now for 12 triples as he owns the best, second greatest, and third greatest shooting performances of all time. Despite having now won two straight in the first game of this win streak against Dallas, Golden State had their 20 point lead trimmed to five, and the Mavs didn't have Doncic or Christian Wood, and of course Kyrie Irving. There's no shame in losing to the reigning champs, but without Steph, you would have thought an OKC team, which many have claimed had arrived on the scene, could have avoided at least getting blown out. Nevertheless, my boy Dime Dropping Jordan Poole put on a Magic Johnson-esque playmaking clinic. The front line in Dre, Kaminga, and the egoless Kavon Looney, a man in Loon who's unhesitantly moved to and thrived off the bench. All three of those guys were productive, and the Dubs shockingly closed it out without an issue after getting up big. After Steve Kerr cleared the bench, Moody and Wiseman even got into the action, so it was all around just a feel-good night in the Bay Area, despite there being a completely different feel without their best player. Stay tuned for the specifics on all that and more, which I promise you can't miss, but we are about to hit 100k, so splash that subscribe button if you haven't already. For the best NBA content on this platform, if you give it a chance, I can guarantee you that. Thanks for your support, back to the content. We broke down a momentum-shifting sideline out-of-bounds play in the fourth quarter in the last Warriors video on this channel where they took down OKC. Go find out what that play was and how it was executed by clicking the top right of your screen and watching that aforementioned vid. This sideline out of bounds though is much different than that screen the screener action which we looked at last time. Kerr runs a zipper chase action on the right side of the court with the four in Kaminga setting the down screen, the one in Poole zipper cutting around the pick to receive the inbounds, and the five in Draymond rhythmically following the first action up with a flare screen for the two in Clay. JP's pass right there was of course timely, but also elusive and of high velocity, plus it was well spaced out. This right here is what's called counter action, as this play sees Poole and Thompson get elusive cuts around well positioned wide flare screens. Clay's tough to gauge movement as he catches the bullet from DiVincenzo gets him just enough room for the fadeaway. But in addition to the play sets from Steve Kerr, let's also acknowledge, of course, the innovation on the game of basketball from the Splash Brothers. Defense back in the 90s, early 2000s, and even for most of the 2010s, lived with contesting shots as Aaron Wiggins does right here by flying out to force a one dribble pull up. That was once considered the proper way to close out on a three point shot. The primary way, not just the rightfully glorified Steph Curry has changed the game of basketball, but also Klay Thompson is with their shooting balance off the dribble. Thompson and Curry's ability to hit shots on the move in traffic was previously unheard of in any other era. In terms of Klay's 42 point masterclass, Draymond Green put it best when describing Thompson's showing, saying quote, it was a beautiful game to watch him play. Dre himself, meanwhile, had a typically commanding defensive game where he racked up two steals and three blocks. Jordan Poole was a game high plus 28 and racked up a career high 14 dimes, like the 2022 finals version of himself. Last night was the man who earned the fat bag Bob Myers gave him. If you've watched this channel before, we've endlessly hyped up the deeply polished and heavy assortion of weapons in Jordan's bag, ranging from guard version of Giannis-esque downhill ravages in terms of his slashing, most noteworthy Jordan's shiftly dicing combos consisting of in and out dribbles, hezzies, and momentum crosses, whether those combos lead to a high volume of pull-up, step-backs, or runners for himself, or if they result in simply a drive and kick. As long as what Poole's doing is under control and he's having an impact defensively on those nights where he's not hitting shots, the 6'4 JP's bigger Rajon Rondo-esque passing, communication, and leadership by example can make up for that lack of shooting. That is, when he doesn't let his head down. And on that last point, personally, getting down on myself in the rough moments and succumbing to adversity at times is something I have and continue to struggle with mentally. Not to throw a pity party, but they tell you cliches like hard times make you stronger. However, that's easier said than done when you're at the pro level or trying to get to the pro level. There's a different level of pressure all this takes, with everyone from the most informed to the most casual all being rightfully able to offer their two cents in many different forms of media. On the nights where things aren't clicking jump shot wise, Jordan just needs to find other ways to contribute value aside from just getting buckets when he's in that rare to find yet readily available lethal scoring flow.
On Jordan's best nights when, down to the core in the truest sense, he's trusting his reactions and instincts, as you saw on Monday night, that allows Poole to make high IQ decisions in terms of how he can manipulate his one-on-one -on -one matchup and collapse the defensive setup with either line drive attacks or angled attacks. Sky's the limit, as I've always said. I've also always said the haters who flip-flop their opinion about him, whether he has a good or bad game, need to stay patient, as he doesn't even turn 23 for a year and a half. I just turned 24 back in August, by the way, all around like a lot of fans can, even the baddies sitting courtside. While I'm not an NBA player, it just for some reason feels like I can relate to what Poole's going through. As we know, this is a stone-cold business, but I thought it was a little odd that there were reports of the Warriors front office voicing dis pleasure about JP's development. That was likely just to motivate, and based off his last performance, this organization obviously knew exactly what they were doing by releasing that press. It was a well-earned celebration for Dub Nation, as Golden State's now moved up into 7th place out west, and now sit merely a half game back of the number 5 seed, and a game and a half back of home court advantage in the first round of 2023's playoffs, with just a quarter of the season left. However, as candy sweet as I'm making the vibes all seem as of this moment, at least I hope I am, don't let the fact get twisted that it's about to be a treacherously long few weeks without our game's most skilled offensive player in Stephen Curry. To be fair, while a lot of people are panicking with Curry going down with yet another injury, it's not like the Warriors haven't survived in the past without him. To improve their, at the time, NBA best home record to 17-2 back in December, without Steph, the Dubs won five consecutive games against the Hawks, Blazers, Jazz, Hornets, and Grizz. Aside from a bottom-feeding Charlotte team, those are four pretty good playoff opponents they beat minus the Chef. A desperate panic mode is far from where the Dubs mentality should be at because of those facts, especially when you have a center as a backup who is undeniably worth 50 to 70 million that you're getting for a massive bargain in Kevon Looney. Looney lost his starting spot, but you wouldn't have even known that if you're not a Warrior fan because the admirably down-to-earth, evidently well-brought-up Looney Tunes didn't have a single complaint. I'm not sure how Kevon stays as humble as he does, but whatever his approach is, I want in. Nevertheless, I'm going to give two commenter shoutouts from my last upload and this one next time, and I know I ask this a lot, but in terms of right now, who deserves more love on the dubs? Let me know down below in the comments section. Thanks for watching.